Hi, and welcome to the AP Biology Lab 7 uh, Genetics of Drosophila podcast. Uh, this is Mr. Anderson. And uh, in the past, we've tried doing the fly lab, but with mixed success. And so we don't breed them in class. Uh, usually what ends up happening is we have a bunch of escaped fruit flies around the lab. And so we'd use the virtual fruit fly lab. And so where did the fruit fly lab all begin? It's with this guy, Thomas Hunt Morgan. And so he's in his fly lab right here working on this fruit fly. Fruit fly is great because it has pretty simple genome, uh, reproduces very quickly, and it's easy to keep in the lab. And so, um, so in this lab, let me kind of walk you through the way we use uh, sciencecourseware.org. They've put together this virtual fly lab, and you can really crank through a bunch of uh, fly crosses really, really quickly. And the statistics are pretty good. And so first of all, we should talk a little bit about what makes a female fly different from a male fly, because um, that's something on the AP test you need to know. Um, female flies in general are going to be a little bit bigger than male flies. Uh, male flies will also have, you can kind of see their rear end is going to be a little bit more rounded than the females which is a little bit pointed and then the big thing that I always see is that the males will have these comb like structures called the sex combs and those sit on the front uh, feet and so that's one way you can tell the difference um, what you do is you just knock them out so you have this uh, you anesthetize them and then they'll knock out you can count them under a microscope uh, but we're gonna do that all virtually so let me jump into a browser for a second and so you can you can log in as a guest or you can sit up a whole class but let's log in as just a guest and so in order to do a cross we'll just do a simple one you click on the computer and then we order flies and so it asks me do I want to order a female fly or a male fly so let's just order a female fly of the wild type and so I just click on this add to cart whenever I'm doing the lab on here I always get lost and I look at the big yellow box and it tells me what I should do next and so if you ever get lost click on that or look at that so if I click on add to cart now it's added one female and now let's grab a male of a different for example let's try uh, wing size and so if we click on that we've got choices and so let's grab a male that has vestigial wings and so now I'll buy him and now I've got my cart filled up so I just say done do you want to buy these and I say yeah so I'm gonna check out all right, so now they arrive in the mail like this. I can click on the box, and it's going to put those in a mating chamber, and it's going to put them in the incubator. So now we just simply let them go. So two weeks later, then we get new flies. The sound effects are kind of annoying, and you can turn those off, and the animations as well, and you can really crank through a lot of crosses. So let me grab this. So now we've got those crossed. So it was a female of the wild type and a male of vestigial wings. We now put them underneath that microscope, and then we sort the flies. So they would be asleep at this point, and then we're going to sort them out according to uh, gender. And so also it could be any other phenotype. But if we look at our two piles here, we see we have 543 offspring that are female wild type. And then over here we have males of wild type as well. So it looks like we have an equal amount of each. Now that would be the F1. So let's do an F2 cross then. So I'm going to look at one of these flies. You can see this is a female. And I'm going to put her in a new mating. So she's added to a new mating jar. Um, let me zoom out for a second. Now let me grab one of the males. And I'm going to add him in a new mating. And then finally I'm going to zoom out again. And now I go back to the lab. And you can see that it's added those to a new beaker. I throw them in the incubator. And then let me grab them out and we'll look at those underneath the microscope. I think that was it. All right, so let's sort those flies. And now we have different groups. In other words, we've got, it looks like 466 male of the wild type, whereas we only have 133 females of vestigial, 168 males vestigial, and then 443 females of the wild type. So this is kind of looking like that 3 to 1 ratio, that Mendel cross, that, that famous cross. Um, we could actually send the data at this point to the computer, and you could do chi-squared analysis. Um, I won't talk about chi-squared analysis on here, um, but I'd probably do that in a different podcast. But 
what do you do at this point? You want to figure out what's the inheritance pattern. So it's looking at this point like wild is dominant, or a better way to say that is that uh, vestigial is recessive. Um, so we kind of have that, or we're going to look at is it a recessive or is it a dominant trait? But then we also have on this matrix two other things. Is it an autosomal? Uh, is it autosomal uh, gene, or is it going to be um, sex linked? And so the next thing I would want to do is I would want to do a reciprocal cross. So then I would do a male of the wild type and then a female of that vestigial cross and then do Punnett squares and try to figure it out. Um, and so that's the uh, fly lab. Again, you can turn off the animations, the sounds, and you can really crank through a bunch of these crosses really, really quickly. Um, I hope that's helpful.